In this math talk, we're going to pick up where we left off in the introduction to analytic geometry, and we're going to look at uh, some word problems that we might be faced with. So what I'm going to do is hang on to all the formulas that we developed and try a few problems. So looking at our first problem, it says, find the centroid K of triangle ABC with vertices a negative 3 7 b negative 7 negative 5 and c 7 4 well first of all any kind of problem like this it makes a whole lot of sense to graph things now i would suggest to you that you might want to pause this video as we go through and try it on your own and see if your answers match with what i come up with so if you want to pause it now and start the questing you can and then rerun the video or start the video forward and uh, pause as we go and see if you're you're on track. So the first thing that I'm going to do is construct a diagram and I think that makes sense in all of our problems. So I'm going to plot the points A, B, and C on my grid and I'm I'm going to construct the triangle. Now I have to ask myself what exactly is a centroid? Well a centroid is the intersection point of the three medians of a triangle. Now we have to remind ourselves what a median is. A median is a line segment that connects a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side of a triangle. So let's just do a little construction here so you can picture it. My median from vertex B to AC is indicated with the green line uh, contacting side AC at point P. And you'll notice that A to P and C to P are equal in length. And so we call that a median. Basically, it splits AC into two equal pieces, and it connects vertex B. And I'll draw a second median from C to AB. And I'll call the point of intersection Q. So now I have two medians. And in fact, if, if the centroid is the point where uh, the two medians intersect, I can call that K. I don't really need to draw on the third median because we know it will intersect there as well by, by our definition. Now, how do I find point K? How am I going to locate the coordinates of point K? Well, in order to find the point of intersection of two lines, we need the equations of the two lines. So I'd need the equation of the line passing through B and P and the equation of the line passing through C and Q. How do we get the equations of those two lines? Well, right now, if we just examine the line through B and P, we recognize that we have the coordinates of B and that's it. We don't have the slope. Now we say to ourselves we could get the slope if we knew the coordinates of P, but we don't have that. However, we do have this thing called the midpoint formula. And uh, P is the midpoint of AC, so we could find the coordinates of P by doing our midpoint calculation. With that, we'd have point P, we'd have point B, we could find the slope of BP, and with the slope of BP and either point B or P, we can find the equation of the line. Better for you to watch me do it. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is find point P. And I will do that by using my midpoint formula for points A and C. So XA plus XC over 2, YA plus YC over 2. Substituting in my coordinates, I get that P has coordinates 2 and 11 over 2. Now with the coordinates 2 and 11 over 2, I can calculate the slope of BP. So substituting in the coordinates for B and P, I get the following. Now I have an expression that has a fraction within a fraction. And one of the things that I like to do is clear that sort of thing out immediately. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by 2. That will clear out the fraction turns the 11 over 2 into 11, the uh, negative negative 5 into a positive 10, and turns the denominator into 4 plus 14. That becomes 21 over 18, or 7 over 6. Now I have the slope of BP. With the slope of BP and my point slope form of a line, I can find the equation of the line. And it goes something like this. 7 over 6 equals y subtract negative 5 over x subtract negative 7. Cross multiplying, I'd have 7 times x plus 7 equals 6 
times y plus 5. Expanding and simplifying, I get 7x plus 49 equals 6y plus 30. Rearranging that equation, I get it in a form that is excellent for performing elimination. Now I'm going to proceed and do the same process for uh, the line passing through C and Q. So it, it follows exactly the same way. So here we go. I first establish that I need to find point Q using the midpoint formula. I then substitute in my values for A and B, the X value for A, the X value for B, the Y value for A, the Y value for B, and I get coordinates for Q that are negative 5 and 1. And as I mentioned before, you may want to pause the video and try this all on your own in parallel um, just to see if you get the same results that I get. So continuing on, I have to find the slope of CQ, substituting in the coordinates of point C and point Q. It leads to a nice, easy to work with slope of one quarter. Once again, I use the point slope form where I substitute in for the slope of one quarter and the coordinates of point C. And then I cross multiply and create an equation which isn't exactly in standard form. However, uh, I have the right side equal to a value. It just sets it up really nicely for elimination. So I've got x subtract 4y equals negative 9. So I now have the equation for the green median, the equ equation for the pink median, and we can now go ahead and solve those two equations for the point of intersection. So it looks like this. I have equation one, I have equation two. Now for elimination, we have to match up the coefficients of either the x or the y. So what I'm going to choose to do here is multiply my second equation, equation two, by seven. And now my two equations are seven x subtract six y equals negative 19, and 7x minus 28y equals negative 63. I can now subtract the two equations, and I'm left with 22y equals 44. Well, that's nice, nice convenient value. It works out to y equals 2. Well, you know, if you look at my diagram, which I drew to scale and tried to draw pretty accurately, it certainly does look like the value for k is somewhere awfully close to 2, and I'm referring to the y value. And so if you use that same diagram, you might say, boy, it's looking like the x-coordinate might be negative 1. Substituting in for y in equation 2, we get x subtract 4 times 2 equals negative 9. That leads to x equaling negative 1. And now we have the problem solved. The coordinates k of the centroid are negative 1, 2. Now, you might be asking yourself, is there a more efficient way to get this answer? Probably on a test, your teacher is going to want to see this method, but there is a nice little shortcut for checking this. Very much like finding the midpoint of a line segment, where you average the x-coordinates and you average the y-coordinates, you can do the same for the centroid of the triangle ABC. So I will leave it as an exercise, but it works simply like this. If you take the x-coordinates of points A, B, and C and average them, in other words, add them together and divide by 3, I think you'll find you get negative 1. Similarly, when you average the y-coordinates of points A, B, and C, in other words, adding them together and dividing by 3, I think you'll find that you get 2 as an answer. And so that is the fast way to get a centroid but probably your teacher is not looking for that method, but it's nice to have that in your back pocket to verify your answer. And, and it lets you know that you're headed in the right direction. That's all I'm gonna fit in in this uh, sort of short video, just uh, this one example, but there are more examples to come. So I'm, I'm going to do that in follow-up videos. Thanks for watching.